Okay, we're going to go back to uh, the second part on this where I'm going to do more on the scarfing. I made some changes since uh, the, the last uh, edit. I did one scarf, but I'm going to change my setup when I started thinking about it. I'm dealing with 6 millimeter plywood, so uh, a 12 to 1 ratio is with the, the 6 millimeter, which is less than a quarter of an inch, is not 3 inches. It's going to be 2 inches and 3 sixteenths. Uh, for the setback, so I readjusted my uh, my sliding scale for that measurement, and I've gone back and redrawn my uh, lines that I want the the um, scarf that when it hits the surface to come out at. Uh, and the other thing I did was I moved my uh, my uh, rear uh, support from 12 inches up to 11 and 3 eighths to give me that match for when I run the big plane down the slope, which will line up with the angle of the scarf uh, that I want to get on uh, 12 to 1 with the 6 millimeter ply. So let me go ahead and uh, reset up here and sharpen the iron on my uh, plane again and then we'll come back and start uh, more into the scarfing. Okay now it's the uh, time for all of the exercise and you got your stop and you got your edges set so now it's time to just start down. However you use, whether you use a uh, skill saw or a router setup or electric plane, it's just a lot of this until you get what you need. So let me go ahead and get uh, some headway on this, and we'll come back. Okay, I'm getting I'm getting down to where you can start seeing the plies. I don't want to get too thin along the leading edge here to where it starts ragging out on me, but I don't want to cut in uh, over here at the start. I got a little back behind my line, which would be right about in here. So as you go along here, start working your edge over. And then watch these little indents along in here. I'm a little thicker in here and I can take some, take some more out. Start getting those lines to start straightening out and then to watch where you're coming out up here along your marked line. So let me carry this on farther a little farther across and we'll get back. Okay, I've reestablished my setback line here and I'm pretty much coming up out of that spot. And you can count down in here the five layers, one, two, three, four, and then the top layer. So I've got fairly good. Uh, it's consistent bevel, and I've got enough thinness down here that uh, I'm happy. I may set these back a little bit so that this thicker edge, it's not a feather edge, will lay in along in here. So I don't mind too much if this goes goes back a bit like it did here because it will fit a little bit. take care of this sheet for now and also I'm going to move it out of the way and set up the next one with my uh, one of those newer measurements I was talking about earlier and that should go along a little quicker. Okay I just got done sanding this part right here and uh, I'm up to my line, my setback line in here and I've uh, put the paper in behind here to show you the uh, the edge and I'm, I'm quite happy with this this uh, scarf area right in here. Uh, down in uh, Right outside here, I got, took an extra extra divot in there with the plane and it pushed it back a little bit, but I'm not going to worry about it. Okay, one of the things we're going to do now is reestablish our uh, our setback line and break out the old guide again. Do something else now. I'm going to take a green pencil this time and mark in this setback line. That's going to give me that. What they do to keep things a little cleaner is to put down some cheap shipping tape. And that keeps
leaves the epoxy when it gets done oozing out, it'll ooze up on the plastic and not in the wood, so that saves a lot of sending time. I'm going to do this to both sides, on the back side of the green line and on the back side of the feather edge. Okay, now we'll put tape on the back side of the where the points are. <laughs> this one's a little ragged, but I don't care. It's not going to worry about it. You armchair boat builders can uh, bitch about it, but uh, I'm okay. It doesn't take a perfect scarf to make a good boat. Okay, you're going to have to be flipping these things over and setting some of the other ones aside, so be careful with the, uh, the ends you've got uh, uh, scarfed out so you don't damage them. And uh, now we'll start putting them back over. Oops. And then there's a view of the, uh, I've had some extra boards in here. This is a view of the workbench and you can just make it, this is from a, a deck that I rebuilt several years ago and uh, saved some boards to make uh, this. It doesn't have to be good wood. Um, and you can, if you're only going to build one boat, you can tear it down and use it for something else again, or rip up boards out of your deck to make it, put it down, and just tell your wife you'll, you know, you'll get to it later, right? Okay, let's flip these guys back up again. Okay, we've got all the uh, start sides pointing up again. I've laid layers of this queen in between each sheet. You got them stacked down with my weights to keep them flat so they don't take on any kind of strange twist. Uh, looking at the bisquake, it's like, you know, maybe one of these days I'm going to go out and buy a new sheet. Uh, I can tell which boat I made by uh, just by looking at the color of the stains on the uh, bisquake. Okay, well, what we have to do now then is uh, bring out that, that stuff called ooh, epoxy. And uh, we're going to mix up some epoxy, just little batches, to fill in the ingrain. You've got, you want to think of this plywood like microscopic little uh, straws you would uh, suck a, you know, a soft drink through. They want to suck the epoxy back into the wood and take it away from the joint. So what we want to do with the epoxy before we put a layer on to scarf together, we want to make certain that the wood will not suck up any more epoxy, or won't suck any epoxy out of the joint. So we're going to pre-fill uh, the uh, uh, ingrain with epoxy until it doesn't want to suck up anymore. Then we'll give it a sand, and then we'll coat it down with, uh, I think, the boat builder's best friend, uh, Gel Magic, which is a, a clingy kind of epoxy adhesive. And we'll be using uh, System 3's uh, uh, Gel Magic coming in the Utah too with the mixing nozzle. It's slicker and cheese in a can. Uh, so. Uh, We'll stop with this and uh, start with the epoxy on, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be the next one or not. It'll be whenever it happens to be.